Hello, Iacon. We're Greg and Yoshi, the writers of Transformers Reanimated, and we want to thank Iacon for having us here to talk about how our rejected Transformers G1 story pitch became a fan favorite fan fiction. For people who don't know us, I've been a Transformers podcaster for a long time now, and Greg has his own podcast that deals with pop culture and movies, but we're both huge Transformers fans. So when we found ourselves unhappy with the current state of Transformers comics, we thought, well, let's put our money where our mouths are and actually pitch an idea to IDW Publishing, an idea we know fans want to see and an idea we thought had merit. So we finished off the first script and had a cover created by the very talented Casey Collar and sent it all in to IDW as a pitch. Of course, it was promptly rejected solely on the basis of it not being solicited. Greg and I were naturally dejected, but after several members of the Transformers fandom urged us to keep going, we decided to launch Reanimated as a website and create a fan fiction project that G1 fans can enjoy, since they aren't getting their fill from the current landscape of Transformers comics. For the last 18 months, we have produced a monthly and fully completed 20-page script that you can download for free from TransformersReanimated.com. Along with these scripts, each story comes with a cover that has been drawn out and colored by a professional Transformers artist, such as Casey Collar and Livio Ramondelli, just to name two. And even after 18 months, we have another two years worth of scripts waiting to be published and are working on many more. The fan reaction has been very supportive. We have a very healthy amount of traffic and downloads from our website. We have also turned our scripts into a podcast, a podcast where we get help from other Transformers podcasters and G1 fans as we read through the scripts. The podcast is a fun audio reading of the comic book where we improvise voices and give some behind the scenes information about our writing process. So if you like the idea of Soundwave speaking like Bane from Batman or knowing how we constantly try to kill Bumblebee in each script, then you'll enjoy the Transformers reanimated podcast. So like we said earlier, it has been 18 months. So where has Transformers Reanimated taken us? Well, let's have a quick spoiler-free look back because we are filling in the gaps between season two and the movie, which we all love. Uh, but we began with the sort of a general G1 adventure where the Decepticons try to take down the White House with Ronald Reagan. Uh, we also dived into 50s B movie territory when we did an attack of the 4,000 foot frenzy. That was a lot of fun because one of the smallest Transformers becoming one of the biggest is uh, quite a sight to see. For Christmas, there never really was much of a Christmas uh, theme in the show. So we did our version of a Christmas Carol with tracks in the Ebenezer Scrooge role. We got to see Kremzeek again. Uh, origin stories are also a big part of what we want to do with Reanimated. There are very there are a lot of characters that don't get their due until we see them in season three, like Outback, Run Amok, Run About. Uh, we get to see those in uh, issue nine. And For the Love of Hate was a storyline that we brought together, similar to our version of the Sinister Six, a lot of human villains returning, like Dr. Arkaville and Lord Chumley. Uh, we also got to see Red Alert and what he does when he's trapped alone in the Ark. Does his uh, anxious paranoia get the better of him or can he kind of pull it together? That was a fun story with uh, a fantastic cover by Casey Collar. And again, like we said, origin stories, we've done an origin for the Terracons, which I think a lot of people have been asking to see because they do also just show up uh, without mention. And of course, we brought it back to Earth with our latest issue, the Cliff Jumper Cliffhanger. And true to its word, it does have a cliffhanger ending, which teases the origins of a very popular movie character. But what's to come for Reanimated? Well, I think we can give a quick tease. One of them is another origin story for Blur. Uh, we might also be seeing Piranacon sooner than you'd think. I know a lot of people uh, like that character, but he was never in the show. So we thought, well, let's go for it. Uh, Pretenders, Monsterbots, even Omnibots, to name a few. Nightbird Returns. And we will get to see Cup's war stories as they happened. And yes, there will be Petro Rabbits. Uh, we also have a huge story written that involves a new G1 version of a Matrix quest, which promises to shock and sadden at the same time. So yes, when that happens, the big things will happen and 
the Transformers will never be the same again, as they like to say. Uh, but for our very next issue, it's a fun one for sure. It unites RC with the rest of the female Autobots on Cybertron, like Alita One and Firestar, but also some of the lesser known female characters like Greenlight and Lancer. They get, bit, they get a bit more of a spotlight in Reanimated. And of course, they're going up against everyone's favorite one-eyed purple monster, Shockwave. Now, before we close out our panel, we just want to throw it out there to IDW Publishing. We have no hard feelings. We get it. We're two writers who have never written a comic before. But now, since we released our first issue 18 months ago, we have not missed a single monthly release. 18 issues, once a month, for the last 18 months. Greg and I and our fans would love to see these stories fully realized in a physical comic book form. So get in touch. We'd love to work with you. And with that, uh, we would like to open up the floor to any questions anyone might have regarding uh, the comic, how we got started, whatever. Pick our brains so you can jump in and create your own fan fiction comic book. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, Iacon. And uh, we will uh, we'll end here. I'm, uh, I'm Yoshi. I am one of the writers on Transformers Reanimated. Hi, I'm Greg. I'm the other one. I'm the Australian one, if you can't tell. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so I was just, <laughs> you're already getting questions. Um, so first question is, will you guys ever go into the stories of the combiners? Yes. <laughs> we've, uh, well, we've done a, a, a two part issue already uh, a couple of months ago which gave an origin story for the terracons uh, but yeah i would like to do something the protector bots to me is a bit of a um sore point in the show as well because they are one of the few combiner groups that do just kind of show up uh as a lot of the season two characters do without actually any explanation so maybe some kind of flashback or something as to like how did the protector bots you know do the whole defense or thing so um and of course uh yeah in a way we have the seacons they're on their way too as we alluded to in the in the video with piranacon so yeah uh next question you have is how long does it take to complete an issue for the month <laughs> that depends yeah, sure. on who's writing it <laughs> uh one of us one of us is able to uh seemingly right whenever they just feel like it and the other one is uh is a stay-at-home dad who has to wait until somebody's gone to bed before they can start writing so what does it take me it takes me about a month to get an issue and you like five minutes yeah i can usually pump well when we say we've written this we, one of us will write the first draft of a story essentially and then we'll pitch it to the other one and we'll sort of work out work it out and be like oh that bit doesn't work for me or can so-and-so say this or, or can we change that or oh what if this happened you know that kind of thing um yeah i can usually pump out a script in a few days if i've already if, if i've got the I, I bullet point the ideas and then i can do a script in about three or four days if need be if i was doing it from start to finish it would probably take uh you know probably 10 or 12 hours but it's yeah 10 or 12 hours over three or four days so and then, of course, there's the uh, getting the artists to do the cover. That probably takes the longest because obviously it's a lot more detailed. So, yeah. uh, cool. The next question is, why don't you guys like Bumblebee? If they, if you don't mind them asking. <laughs> I like to deflect uh, towards Bumblebee so people leave Hot Rod alone. <laughs> That's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's okay, Bumblebee. He's fine. I just so feel he's a little overexposed. <laughs> so it's just you, Greg? Just me? Just or you? Hot Rod? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> me and Nick Roche. <laughs> uh, so the next question, what was it like pitching to IDW? Uh, what stuff did you have on hand aside from the cover and whatnot? We, uh, well, we had the whole script written out and printed off. We had... Um, we had the cover done. We had one interior page done. Uh, we we worked with a with a letter at IDW to go ahead and put the the lettering all together and make sure everything was 
was uh, was all all the T's were crossed and I's were dotted, and we shipped that off physically to IDW. I think we shipped off two copies to two different editors over there, and uh, uh, when we heard back from them, it it it, it was rage inducing. Honestly, <laughs> um, I was I was so mad, and uh, uh, that we just said we can't let this die. Greg and I didn't want this to die, so like 24 hours later, we had the website up and we were prepping everything and and talking about how are we going to record these. Uh, so if people don't want to read them, they can just listen to them in their car. How are we gonna? What are we gonna do for voices? Let's get our friends. Let's get other podcasters. Let's get other Transformers fans to do all that. So, you know, I I, I don't know if I, you know. I'm talking too much. IDW has the reasons for for not for not wanting to read it. Specifically, they didn't ask for anything, so they don't want to read it and taint their own stories. And I I can understand that. And, le- and legal stuff is a tricky and thing, legal. of course. So, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, mate, it, it, I understand. Like, we were disappointed, of course, but, like, it's we understand um, in saying that, though. Yeah, like, we thought, well, we still want to get get it out there somehow. So, and and, and obviously there's a, a, a demand for it because the when we dropped the first issue, it crashed the website. We actually had to adjust it to um, to cope with, with the, uh, the traffic, so. Cool. So the next question you have is, did you try to align Transformers reanimated seamlessly with the gaps in the G1 storyline, or are there aspects that are distinctly different or separate from what we might see in those stories? And if so, what are you doing to make them unique? Uh, No, it's 100% set in the time between season two and the movie. So we are being meticulous for continuity and things like that, even though the show at times itself wasn't uh constructor cons etc um but um yeah we are there there's no this is not an alternate timeline this is not the star trek reboot where it's you know go back in time and then veer off into a different thing this will all lead exactly to towards the movie so uh in a perfect world you could watch seasons one and two you could read then you could read all of reanimated and then you could watch the movie and seasons three and four and it should should flow all you know because and you will know like oh who who that's how the terracons why they're in season three and and then when you see the movie like who's blur and who's springer and all that well we'll we are filling those gaps so yeah so i think you might have just inadvertently answered the next question but Mm -hmm. um what exactly is your aim where storytelling is concerned are you looking to match the uh the 80s cartoon feel or are you trying to use more modern stylization like serialized storytelling and linger character arcs or longer <laughs> character arcs, excuse me? This is what we argue about, Yoshi. <laughs> you argue about it. Yeah. Uh, the idea is to mimic the feel of the cartoon as much as we can, but keeping in mind we are moving towards the movie, which is a very different tone and it's a lot darker. And obviously, uh, you know, characters die and there are real consequences to certain actions and things like that. So we are sort of trying to sort of gradually shift into that tone that meets the movie and even season three, uh, like with episodes like dark awakening and, and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, we, most most issues of reanimated will be uh one and dones with you know maybe some background stuff and things like that 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 may pay off down the track and stuff like that and then there's a few uh two parters of course which are just too big to fit into a, a normal 20 page script but the uh, the general idea is one and done uh episodic sort of issues but they all are a part of a larger story arc but just not you know it's not writing for the trade it's not um you know you need to read this part of issue two and this part of issue three and then by the end of it of seven issues you actually get a story it's 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 yeah they're self-contained as well so are you planning to give the predacons an original story or an origin story (laughs) sorry combining questions we we were 
until we did a bit uh, obviously we followed through with some more research of course and um yeah we we sort of altered course a little bit but yeah predicons are tricky uh because they do kind of appear in season three out of nowhere but they are kind of working with the quintessons so uh yeah we're not sure about the predicons just yet but yeah open to to the idea definitely because i i love the predicons yeah a little bit less of a complicated question but what are both of your favorite transformers <laughs> go ahead josh <laughs> i you know i i love optimus prime i that's i'm i'm very basic as a human being i, I really like him um I will say this. I love the way Greg voices Soundwave when we do readings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the good old Bane. <laughs> we, we, we couldn't mimic the, uh, the Soundwave effect live, obviously, and we didn't want to do the um, uh, post-production to, to, you know, with the vocoder and stuff for Soundwave. So I just did a bad Bane impression. So it's very much just like yes, Megatron, all this kind of nonsense. So, um, but yeah, my favorite uh, Power Glides. He's my guy. He's my like I said, I like Hot Rod before, but yeah, Power Glides. He's the one for me. <laughs> cool. Um, another person asked, "Have you written any original characters for Reanimated? And if so, could you tell us a little bit about them?" Um. Do you want to tease Yoshi? <laughs> I guess we've we've written one original character, um, and uh, uh, it's in an issue that hasn't come out yet. Uh, it's a it's a time travel story, and uh, uh, this uh, this Transformers alt mode is a Tesla Cybertruck. Yeah, my uh, a couple of characters we created as well, uh, like human characters and things like that. I don't know if it's, I don't know if created is the word, but homaged, we, we've sort of used uh, our version of uh, Blackrock from the Marvel comics, but our version is Jane Blackrock as a bit of a, you know, spin on, on that. So female Tony Stark, as opposed to straight up Tony Stark. Um, and then our, uh, our sniveling lawyer character, um, uh, Lawrence Mudd, he's, he's been fun as well, just popping up here and there and, and sort of linking gaps between human villains, which we had in one of our stories, sort of a, a Sinister Six kind of, um, yeah, homage again. <laughs> cool. Um, probably running out of time for questions, but we do have a good one here. Um, hello, guys. This is Brandon Easton, the writer. Um, with your talent and work ethic, have you considered creating your own original universe of giant robot stories? uh not giant robot stories i do have a bunch of manuscripts that i'm trying to get published that have nothing to do with transformers but they are kind of uh adventure sci-fi not superhero but like action hero kind of related um manuscript stories but uh yeah but i haven't and then i've got four finished and more to come but uh yeah nothing uh Nothing with another race of robots, uh, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like that's all of the questions, which is good because we're out of time. So if you guys want to wrap it up, say goodbye, shout yourselves out, go nuts. Cool. Well, I'm Yoshi. That's Greg. And uh, you can learn everything about the project at transformersreanimated.com. Uh, every issue is free. We've been publishing them monthly since we started. So there's 18 issues up there with art. Uh, the podcasts are almost as far along as the issues and you can download those for free. And I mean, it's an easy place to find our contact information, shoot us questions, uh, whatever. Thanks for having us. Thanks very much. And just one last thing, uh, Aaron, I don't know about ALF. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us, guys, and thanks for the questions. Appreciate it. <laughs>